Willkommen in der Kolonie, Baby! Welcome back, everyone! This time around we are going to have a look at all the screenshots which came out over the past months. Join me while I overanalyze, compare it to the original and give my two cents about the new designs. Have fun! First things first, let's have a look at the recently released view from the mountain pass. Quite some things changed since the demo, now there is no additional fortifications on the way down since they want to stick to the original. The view is fantastic and you can see the whole valley just like in Gothic Classic. Although many areas are obscured by thick clouds hanging in the mountainous regions, maybe to hide unfinished areas. Well, we could clearly see Xardis Tower in the playable teaser and in the old version, this time around it is nowhere to be seen and that is a change I quite enjoy. Since the tower only appeared after Xardis left the old camp, it would have been very suspicious to the remaining mages inside the barrier. A very prominent sight to behold is the old citadel on top of the mountain just south of the old camp, where we first encounter Urshak. While the tower is easy to identify, I kind of struggle to see the remaining walls which had been present in the original, and they also added two peaks to the left of the citadel. Far behind the old camp, to the right, in the southwestern area of the valley, we can make out some details if we look very closely. Tower-like structures are visible, the one tower on the lower part is likely the one next to the entrance to the Orc Temple, the other ones must be new and are maybe a sign that they plan to make the Orc area bigger and expand the Temple City into the mountains, playing with the verticality. I fail to recognize any significant additions on the right side of the screenshot in the western part of the colony, but the snowy mountains in the background indicate a colder climate in the periphery of the valley. The river in the foreground is barely visible, but it's still there where it should be. The density of the trees around the camp is increased, not sure if I like it since I really appreciate the almost barren nature of the central plains. The treetops to the left behind the tall rock gain some significant height and they seem to be part of the eastern forest. The old camp, however, seems to be about the same size like the vanilla version and has the same layout. The building with the most significant changes has to be the abode of the fire mages. It is quite different compared to the surrounding buildings and its arched architecture and the dome on top is quite reminiscent of the Adenos Shrine in Corinna's city. Next we will talk about the arena which received some huge changes. It has an additional level of stands for the spectators gaining a good amount of height and the top levels have sun blinds for protection from the heat. The house on the right which roof serves as a platform was actually meant to be the place where the ore barons would watch the spectacle from and got some extensions in the remake. The pit itself now has several kennels attached to it, presumably where the dangerous monsters will be kept for the fights. Now we move to the iconic northern gate. Behold the mighty fortress. Starting with the foreground we see some kind of derelict wall which is absent in the original and the path to the gate is plastered with uh, wooden planks. The original location of the scaffold used for executions is now home to a roofed structure or some kind of unfinished hut. The gallows, however, are moved to the right side where the small pond of sewage water could be found in the original. The castle itself is adorned by the typical red colors of the old camp. The flags still show the sword icon, albeit a little bit different since the classic one had an additional crest on top of the sword. The castle walls and even the tall tower in the background are partially overgrown with plants. And in the background we can finally see birds flying. They can not only be heard now, but we can also see them flying around in the valley doing bird things. Finally we arrive at the heart of the outer ring, the marketplace where Fisk and Dexter set up shop. The whole place looks very dark and gritty. And the biggest change is that the wooden roof does not cover the whole area, but rather only the upper left area. 
However, the center is protected by multiple layers of awnings being held in place by ropes, which gives the scenery some, some kind of oriental flair, I guess. Moving inside the castle, we are going to peek into Stone's workshop. The ceiling was lowered and it seems like the door which leads to the dormitories is now gone. The door on the other side, however, is still present, yet it got moved a little to the side. Uh, windows got added to the wall in the back and uh, the shop where Skip sold his stuff seems to have moved somewhere else. We also get a view of what might be the cellar of the fortress where all the goods for the barons and guards are stored. It seems it got bigger or the two storage rooms were combined into one. Also it's very dark, it's dank and it feels just right and I can't wait to see the dungeons below the old camp. Also all the barrels are not standing on the ground, they are now properly stored and are probably filled with all sorts of alcohol. In the next screenshot we witness one of Corina's finest barbecues, Roasted Scavenger. A lot of mugs and jars indicate that the consumption of alcohol among the diggers is actually quite common. The makeshift barrier surrounding the outer ring looks still very rough and is adorned with textile sheets just like in the OG. The main gate has a great amount of detail, new ornaments and also gargoyles now adorn the entrance and those gargoyles are actually in the shape of shadow beasts. The flags hanging from the walls show a sword, just like in the original, but now it seems to be adorned with golden wings. Now let's take a look at some of the new armor designs. Staying at the barbecue, we obviously haven't talked about the novice of the Brotherhood smoking some dank kush from the swamp. I think they really nailed the colors. The mainly used khaki, complemented by turquoise, red, white and some of these black runes or icons or whatever. However, I don't really like the cut of it. The original had one large collar covering their shoulders and chest, which is kind of missing from this one. Kai Rosenkranz said in an interview that they wanted more diversity between groups of armors for a more individual look, and maybe this is the result of that. Also, the black leather strap, which is connected to the belt, is somehow missing, and the cut of the lower part is also a little bit different. While the original looked more like a skirt, this one is parted in the middle. But it still has the turquoise fabric hanging from the belt and the footwear still seems to be made out of linen wraps. Talking about the Brotherhood, let's check out the Templar's armor from a screenshot we got a while back actually, when the old mine trailer was released. Well, this is obviously the medium armor since it's lacking a full harness and arm protection. Um, and I gotta say, my biggest gripe about this piece are the pauldrons. Instead of one piece per shoulder, they now have two, making them kind of layered. That in itself, I don't really mind, but they could be bigger in general. Comparing it to the old version, they became quite more realistic in size, while the classic ones are pretty massive, which I actually prefer. Well, I played World of Warcraft a lot, so you see where I'm coming from. Even though they were more massive, I still think they looked reasonably big back in the day and they just hit the sweet spot in terms of size, at least for me. The crossed leather straps from the original have been removed and instead the harness now covers most of the chest and the mask of the sleeper is now a more prominent feature. The leather braces are now reinforced with some metal. And the battle skirt looks fantastic actually and has some additional straps of fabric in the camp's khaki colors attached to it. Unfortunately, we uh, don't really see the full set and just the upper half. Let's move back to the old camp and their iconic armor sets, starting with the Light Guard's armor. The camp's colors on the armor got dulled and it isn't as bright and intense anymore. It seems that this one, while still having a battle skirt, received some trousers made of leather or fabric and that is a very nice addition. Now you can sport your first guard armor without dying of cringe while running around in the colony. I think uh, back in the day the new camp must have loved at these poor bastards. Really, really good. The battle skirt also seems to be made out of some kind of padded leather. 
The prominent leather collar, however, which also serves as some kind of chest piece, is still very characteristic and reminds us that those were armors once worn by the king's men. The similarity to the Karina's militia is very, very strong. The new version also now has some bracers also made out of leather. The medium guard armor, well, the main difference to the classic version is the absence of a more prominent neck protection and that the chain mail is now worn over the red coat instead of under it. The chainmail is also only partial, while in the OG the guards wore a long shirt of it, it seemed. And now we're talking big and heavy. Not only we get a glimpse at an armor we were never really able to wear in the original, but also at a man who might be the mighty protector of gates, Thoris. The most interesting part is that it seems to have two alternate versions. One which is sporting the iconic breastplate with a Shadow Beast's face engraved on it, and the other version being more simplistic, uh, without the face. Starting at the top we see that the pauldrons are now reinforced with steels and don't bend upwards anymore. It may give the heavy guard a more unique silhouette, but it always looked kind of silly to me, so that's a change I definitely embrace. The rest of it seems pretty faithful to the original. It even has studded leather braces. The reasons for the alternative versions could be the following. First, as Kai said, it is done for an increased visual variety. Or secondly, the armor with the Shadow Beast's face is exclusive to Thoros because he is a high standing guard actually. The question remains if the player will be able to choose which one he can buy or if the armors can be altered at a workstation, for example. Regarding all of the guard armors in general, I think they look way too flawless. These things are taken from the King's Men decades ago and nobody knows how long they were wearing them. Worn in many battles and patched up time and time again, these things should look really, really used. The last piece of armor we check out is the Lesser or Baron garment, which in this screenshot is worn by none other than the right hand man, Raven. Comparing the silhouette it becomes obvious that the classic one is way more bulky and this has to do with a low detail depiction of the furs on the shoulders, so the new one looks kinda lean. The chest protection changed also quite a lot to some kind of compound material made of leather and chainmail. The high collar was also absent from the original. The plate protects the upper arms and shoulders as well as the hands, just like in the original game. Raven himself, I always imagined him older, maybe even being the oldest of the barons who made it to the top not because of pure strength, but rather relying on his cunning and experience. Finally, we take a look at the new monster designs and oh my god, there are quite some yays, but also some nays. Starting with a mole rat, a beloved early game monster, got changed quite a bit. The almost pig-like design from the original is a thing of the past and the new one resembles a mole rat of our own world, only way bigger and more aggressive. Jesus Christ, do, do you see that? Dear heavens, are, are these nipples on that mole rat? Oh my, I really want some nipples on these mole rats. I'm open for that sweet mole rat nipple DLC. Well, I, I think I digress. Um, in general, the skin tone is almost the same and now they have even some whiskers, just like in the real world. Moving on to the scavengers. They look more in line with the original compared to the teaser's version. However, the beak could be more curved and the tail could be shorter. Also, these two scavengers seem to be different types, hence the different bone structure on the skull and the back plates. Or they just want to give every monster just a little bit more variety. In general, I think they still look a little too lizard-like and less like a mutated chicken or something. Oh, well, maybe they change it still, but I don't know. Oh, oh my god! Can you hear that buzzing sound? Watch out! It's a blood fly! 
Well, I think this one is pretty damn close to the original one, that is. If you look closely, you can even make out the mandibles and the teeth in the original, which are very prominent in the new version. However, I think the mouth might be a little too big and the tongue is kind of weird to see it on an insect, right? Also, um, the original only had two eyes and not four. Well, now we are raising our eyes even higher into the sky to observe the sexy harpies. Well, just kidding, they look horrifying. And I mean that in a good way. They underwent quite some changes, but I think it's for the better. Now they are more beast than woman and the bird features are more intense. Like the long bird legs and more feathers on their thighs. The face, however, is straight up horror. The hag-like appearance got swapped for this very toothy mouth, slick hair and these white soulless eyes. Pretty good job. From the skies we now go down into the crypts and witness the necromantic nature of the skeleton mage. This model also received many changes, but this time I think for worse. The original skeleton mage was horrifying. Once you spot his floating half-body covered in rags with his spine dangling from the bottom, you better attack it quickly or with summon undead minions ready to surround you. The new design is very generic and it looks like a lich from D&D, I guess. The spine is not visible due to the long robe and it is wielding a staff with weird electric magic surrounding it. The pauldrons, they look cool, but they're not really fitting for this kind of monster type. The original design was creepy because it was so simple and you only saw a weird floating movement in the shadows in a Jesus-like T-pose. Next up we go even deeper and take a good look at the iconic Minecrawlers. I don't really hate the new design, it's something new and I think that I will embrace it. The old ones had ant-like features, while the new ones are more spider-like I guess with longer legs and the thought of them crawling on the ceilings of the mineshaft is actually pretty horrifying. The mouthpiece is still made out of this hard, kittenous material which they use to chip away rocks. The original, however, had very unsettling eyes, which the new ones lack, I think. And like the Bloodfly, they now have four eyes. What's up with that? The next monster type is either a hit or a miss with their designs. Of course, we're talking about the goblins. They look great in Gothic 1 and 2. They kind of look like green Martians in the third installment and the Arcania version is just plain shite. The original goblin was even for its size very horrific. Think about it, scaly reptile like skin, a mouth as wide as can be, filled with pointy teeth, small slanted eyes and a very flat nose. I knew it was kind of hard to get them right and I haven't really made up my mind about the new ones yet. The nose, for example, is too human-like, their eyes too wide and big. The silhouettes change quite a bit also, and they look a little too humanoid for my taste. Sure, they are somewhat intelligent creatures, but Gothic 1 gave them these animalistic features which really defined them. And just as I wanted to get this video done, some more screenshots were released, so please bear with me. The first one shows the area leading up to the mountain pass where you encounter Redford and Drax. One of them is even present, kind of kneeling in front of the scavenger. This is the first look actually at any armor from the new camp. And we can see some slight blue coloration and a fur piece on his chest. And he even wears the same maze like in the original. Um, this shot again gives a very good impression of the use of colors. And the bleak tone is actually back. In the end, we finally get our first glimpse at the man, the myth, the legend, and our mentor, Diego. The model is very well done and I enjoy it quite a bit. His nose is on point and he even has this sharp stare in his eyes. Widow's peak and slick hair is back, but I didn't really see his ponytail. I feel they made him younger ever so slightly, which I'm fine with actually. And they also changed the beard. While he had a mustache in the original, he now has the friendly mutton chops. 
Also, we get our first look at the heavy shadow armor. It looks brilliant, even though the shoulder piece isn't as big anymore. The pauldrons in the OG were also slightly bent upwards, which gave it a really unique silhouette. The metal enhancements on the vest, however, are a very nice detail. The armor is still a mashup of leather, metal, fabric and chainmail. Very, very faithful. Well, now we are done with this and it was a lot of ground to cover. I hope you liked it. I certainly had a blast getting into those. Thanks for sticking around, folks, and I will see you next time. May the sleeper awaken.